<laughs> I quit smoking recently. And, um, I gotta have it. That's the one. And we're live. Hello, everyone. This is the best podcast we got. I'm Justin. And I'm Steven. And today we're going to be talking about the history of Rhode Island. Yeah. How did it all start? That's where we live. Yeah. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> That's where we live. And, and we're going to talk about how we came to be a yeah. state. How did Rhode Island... The, how Rhode Island... And this isn't Long Island, so everyone knows... Rhode Island measures about 48 miles long by 37 miles wide. It's the smallest state in the United States, and despite its small size, Rhode Island has is called the Ocean State because it has 400 miles of coastline. It's not how small the state is. It's how you live in it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was fo- founded by Roger Williams in 1636. It became a state... May 29th, 1790. Currently, it's 1,545 square miles, and the capital is Providence, and the population is just over a million people. 1.059 million. And roughly 75% of them are old as fuck. Mm -hmm. Really? No, that's not true. (laughs) That's not we don't right. have an old population. We go to Florida so, when they're old. We have so many old people. Yeah, but... During the summer, we have so many old people. But it's not fact. It's not. We stick to the facts here on the We're best factful. podcast we got. I said something else. I don't know. Just, I'll review the tape. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're, we're going to get into how we came to be and what Rhode Island is today. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel like we should kick it off with the main man himself. Roger Rob, Williams. Roger Williams. Roger Williams was a Puritan minister. And so, a scoundrel. And a scoundrel. <laughs> he, was, he was actually a good guy. <laughs> he, uh, he came in from England, and when he got off the boat, they wanted him to be the minister in Boston uh, because he was so devoted to the church. They wanted him there. Instead, he ended up going to Salem, Massachusetts, and um, while he was there, he got into some trouble. With witches? Yeah. (laughs) Really? Fucking witches. Did he really? No. (laughs) (laughs) No. Well, it was around that time. Yeah. (laughs) Somewhat, right? I I don't think so. I mean, he was like, hey, everyone come here for their religious freedoms and everybody while in mass and burning witches. (laughs) <laughs> maybe he, he he started the first witch maybe uh, he maybe, he planted the first witch isn't that a warlock isn't the male witch a warlock yeah maybe he was a warlock it's cool it's badass <laughs> everyone knows he can do magic he can do magic yeah he looks like he does magic do you see <laughs> the hat he wears if everyone if anyone gets a chance take a pic take a look at uh Roger Williams we'll, we'll put him somewhere over here on the screen he is a magical looking <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> Except like he looks like he's like, like um, evil sorcerer guy. Well, well, the cool thing about him was he was like the first rebel. Yeah, you know what I mean. He was like all about the individual. He was a rebel. He he didn't think that the church and state should be together. You know. He looks like old Greg. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like old Greg, <laughs> except more malicious. Yeah, like old Greg was looking for love. That, 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 you know, that, that yeah. Old Greg. <laughs> Holy shit! He looks just like old Greg. <laughs> Save that. I gotta. Well, I'll gonna, show them. I'm gonna put them. it on them. We're gonna put. It I'm on. gonna give you a comparison. <laughs> if you don't know who old Greg is, <laughs> well, this old Greg. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this he, old Greg. He did not believe in the uh, that religion should be tied together with with the state, and that's why he actually turned down the position that, to be a minister in Boston. Uh, because he didn't believe that he thought that the government would corrupt the religion. So, like, opposite of what we think now. Yeah, that is interesting. When we talk about separation of church. Yeah, because you would think, like, uh, if one, if the the whole country has a state-run religion, yeah, then it's like everyone that's not in that religion might have different beliefs and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. you would think that it would, the religion would corrupt 
the government or yeah. the way that politics is run. So, and then like you, by taking that away from the church, essentially, you know, they saw it as a threat, right? And they're like, blasphemous ideas. We can't have this. You have to go. Yeah, exactly. We're going to burn you with the witches. It had, it had to uh, coincide with the, the religious beliefs. But it's just funny because this guy was just like, hey, I don't I don't think we should be like the church should just do its own thing. And, and the, the government should do its own thing. They shouldn't even coincide with each other. He was, yeah. He was ahead of the curve. He was. Wait. He was the wokest. He was woke. He was woke. He was. He was woke. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, one thing he did believe, he did, he believed that other people should be allowed to practice their own, their separate religions. Um, and that didn't go over with those prudes in mass. No, no, no. no. The Puritans believed that their religion was the one and only religion. So they were not, they didn't take too kindly to him. And literally, he had to flee for his life. Yeah. Yeah. So, he ended up fleeing to Rhode Island, uh, and he he started a small town uh, called Providence for the Divine Proven- <laughs> Province. Divine Province. Yeah. yeah. Ain't nothing divine about it. <laughs> I know divine. <laughs> no, desire. <laughs> no divines at desires. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> desires is a local strip club. Yep. Also strip sponsors club. my hockey team. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, so he he got a char he asked for a charter from uh, King Charles, who granted it him the charter for Rhode Island and the province plantations. And that was because they, they named Rhode Island the Island of Rhodes because that's, you know, they, you know, they used a, a uh, European name for, you know, like everything here. In the- yeah. I think there was like kind of a couple of theories about why they called it Rhode Island mm-hmm. because another one was like, uh, the Isles of Rhodes in Greece is similar in, uh, yeah. Like uh, the the way the islands are off the coast is kind of like that. So yeah, how the that that look. Yeah, and it almost is it's very similar. So did that that too. That was another theory. Mm-hmm. And there was another thing about like uh, what's that guy's? I don't remember his name. Bad with names, man. Well, he also he also believed that uh, that the king of England didn't have any right to give away. The land that belonged to the Indians. Oh yeah, he bought yeah. all the land. Like he was yeah. the only way. Like he respected. So their... he respected the Indians. So he bought the land and kind of coincided with the uh, with the Indians. And uh, you know, he he was on friendly terms with the the Narragansett Indians. Yeah, he was like on the best terms in all yeah. the New England settlements. Uh, in fact, it was one of the only reasons why the neighboring uh, states respected Rhode Island was because they had strong allies in the Narragansett Indians so nobody kind of fucked with them they were like ah you know we're not going to fight with those guys because they have they have Indian friends they have Indian friends <laughs> very tolerant <laughs> they knew everyone yeah well they were cool with the Indians because they would like pay them for their land and not just yeah. be like hey this is ours now fuck yeah. off you know <laughs> they're like no no this is ours now we're going to buy it from you yeah and you know be, be you know human beings yeah. he, he actually made a book that that um that talked about like the language, he he knew like he seven decipher- languages. He know? deciphered uh, the the Indian language and then he, he put it into a book and uh, read that. Was it like how to like teach the language? It was like yeah. an Indian to English. Yeah, it was kind of like book? a tra- it's kind of like a translation book. That's cool. Yeah, I did read that he did have he knew like seven it was, languages. It was like that, and I believe the culture too. Like you know, it's like oh. kind of like everything in in one. Yeah. Um, and then obviously nineteen thirty six. I mean, not the 1936, 1636, he, he founded Providence soon after Portsmouth, um, Newport would, uh, rise to, uh, rise to their, their current standings. Well, not their current standings, but the standings of then Newport would become, uh, the biggest port, one of the biggest port cities on the East coast. Yeah. It was like a huge trading hub. They did like a, a lot of fishing over there too. Right? A, lot yeah, well, of, a lot of shipbuilding. Well, it's funny. It became the capital of Rhode Island, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. During that mm-hmm. time. No, no, no. Yeah. That's cool. So, that makes sense. That was before the War of Independence, obviously. Uh, and before the War of Independence, too, it rivaled Boston and 
uh, New York in size. So it was like huge trade hub, a lot of, um, you know, and they had a big shipbuilding, uh, lots of shipbuilding there. Uh, ooh, that's a nice sound. It sounded like you ripped it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were one of the largest shipbuilding ports. Um, obviously also a large slaving port. Mm. So, so that, that, that came with the, uh, with the large port in, uh, in the Northeast. Um, yeah, funny fact, uh, well, not funny, well, pretty awesome. There was, uh, Rhode Island was one of the first ones to kind of make a law about, you know, like, an abolitionist law. Yeah. That said you can add, uh, they limited the, res- they restricted the amount of, uh, years someone could be a slave to 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, no one really took it serious. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, fuck you. Yeah, they, they were, they were the first ones to come with any abolition, you know, laws, so... They were, and it was it was actually kind of fueled by uh, Quakers who rebelled. Yeah, uh, they were rebelling. They wanted full abol- you know, full abolishment of slavery, mm-hmm. and uh, they were like, "Okay, we'll just uh, we'll put this in here, and that you guys stop rioting, basically." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the Quakers weren't too bad. I, I remember we had that uh, that theory like they got kicked out of Rhode Island like later. They well they. Uh, I believe Roger Williams didn't like them. Yeah, he didn't like, he didn't like that them. was like the one group of people he didn't like. I tried to find out why. Yeah, I mean, well, they, they got little... they got kicked out of Massachusetts originally, and then they got kicked out of parts of Rhode Island, and they would slowly make their way to Pennsylvania, where they end up staying. Staying. Yeah. It's the Quaker state. The Quaker state. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. Do they make oats oatmeal? Yeah, all the Quakers, they make oatmeal. They That's where it's still Quakers comes today. Qu- yes, they do, right? <laughs> I knew it. That guy's a Quaker on the oatmeal box, right? He looks Amish, but he's really a Quaker. No, he's not Amish. He's a Quaker. Okay? Really? Yeah. He could be. Oh, he doesn't have the beard. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, New Newport, like... Uh, Rhode Island and Lake Providence would be a, a place where faiths, all faiths would be allowed to practice. Um, and in 1658, the first synagogue in the United States would open up in Newport. Also, the first Quaker meeting house would open up in um, Newport as well. Yeah, they called it like a friendship lodge or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like 1699, I think it was, the first Quaker uh, meeting house opened up in in uh, Newport. Mm-hmm. Um and oh yep right here huh? it's on my thing oh, 1699 very nice <laughs> uh, Rhode Island uh, despite they despite this though they did have some uh, run-ins with the Indians they uh, obviously had the King Philip's War mm-hmm. um, which in itself would be a whole topic that would take this yeah, whole thing. So, yeah. so we're not going to go too much into it, but basically that, that kind of set Rhode Island back in their, in their growth. Um, there would be this, uh, this, this fight between, uh, with King Philip, who was, a uh, Medicom, Medicomet. No, it was, I think Medicom was his advisor or his lesser man. His, they called, they called him jokingly King Philip and his name was Medicomet, I think. Yeah. Oh, I thought his name was. I thought that was his other his boy. They they killed him actually in modern day Bristol. Where yeah. Today. Yeah. It yeah. was like a, where his, we live now is where they killed. They killed him here. It's somewhere King around Philip. here in yeah. the same ground he was killed. I believe it was on King Philip's Road. That's why they named the road after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. And this is where some of the first fighting. During the War of Independence happened. Yeah, the first uh, real kickoff of the Revolutionary yeah. War was the uh, the Great Gatsby. Yep. And we should not the Great Gatsby, but the Gatsby. Oh, the Great Gatsby was the that famous was the novel. <laughs> yeah, with, and the movie with Leo in it <laughs> with Leonardo. <laughs> yeah, Leonardo. <laughs> no, yeah. it was uh yeah we call it Gatsby Days. We have a Gatsby Days fe- uh, festival down where I used to live over in uh, Narragansett, or yeah. Preston. Every year we have a they send out a mock. A boat and they set, they it, on set fire, it on fire, which is pretty cool. That's kind of a metal cool. thing to do, you know. Yeah, it's I like, like that. That's it is cool. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It is cool. Yeah, <laughs> I went there a few times, but now it's mostly like a, it's much like an art, art, arts and crafts event now. Yeah, and they line the streets with little like uh, stands and they sell like little trinkets for like 
crazy amount of money, you know, and all these people go there and uh, do they still burn the boat? Oh yeah, they burn I mean, the boat. that's like the one. That's why I went. Yeah. I've, I've never been. I'd actually really? want to do that. Oh yeah, dude, it's fine. Right on Patuxent Village. It's awesome. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so they they you know when uh, before uh, independence was declared. In, uh, they burned the boat out yep. in the harbor. We, and then that preceded by that was preceded by uh, the Boston Tea Party. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. 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 It kind of kicked it off. But the Boston Tea Party gets all the credit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one really knows about the gas fee. Well, I think the problem was that uh, the British were like, since, since this happened, the British came and like took Newport. Yeah. So, and the, um, the, the, the colonists couldn't get it back. Yeah, they held um, it for a long time. They, they held it deep into the war until um, 1778, I believe. Yeah. They held it till 1778, and then, uh, uh, who what was his name? Lafayette uh, fought to take back Newport, which they would actually use to be a landing place where that French would come in and actually brought, that's where the no, French like the landed troops. to bring the troops in. Yeah. Uh, but they, he said, Lafayette said it was it was the best fort fought part of the war, he said. Oh, it was like the toughest fight? Yeah. Taking uh, Newport. Yeah. Well, I mean, the access to um, the harbor and everything, they had to be deploying troops. He said, there, right? although few ca- there were few casualties, he said he called it the actions, the best fought of the war. Well, you know, was he there? Huh? Was he there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he's like, no... Where I was, that's where the fighting was done. Yeah. That well, was the proper... Well, this is the same guy who, who in uh, the South, was the main orchestra of the uh, the uh, fighting down there. Yeah. yeah. Well, not the main Main fighting. fighting. Yeah. That was kind of general. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you would, mean? If you uh, watch... Um, the Patriot. Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> if you get your facts from uh, the Patriot. <laughs> was he the dick that was on the cavalry guy? He was the, uh, he's supposed to be the fancy uh, French guy. Yeah. Oh, that was him? Yeah. Oh, I got it way off. That guy's cool. Yeah. He comes around. Him and uh, Rochambeau. Rochambeau. Yeah. I was, I was researching that and I wasn't sure if that was how it was pronounced. Yeah. I was like, so they invented a game about kicking each other in the balls <laughs> based on Rochambeau. Yeah. Who is he, an Indian? No. He was French. He was French? Yeah. French, Russian, oh, it is. That's a French ass name. That's a French ass name. Rochambeau. He landed. Delicious wine from Newport. And I kick you in the balls. He landed in Newport in 1780 and became, which Newport became the base for France in the, during the War for Independence. Uh, Rhode Island had a complicated uh, history with slavery at this point. Oh, yeah. Uh, The state. Outlawed slavery, but weak enforcement meant that Rhode Island largely was still a slave, large slave holding state. Um, and and uh, can we go back for a second? Yeah, you know that King Philip was actually killed on King Philip's Road, right? You were making a joke, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> oh, I thought dead ass he died in that. No, road. he died. <laughs> no, no. He they died like, Mount Hope, they killed him in a swamp. Oh, he was yeah. killed in Mount Hope, yeah. Oh. Why they need the road? Why is mine in County? <laughs> wow, cool. fact checking. Good. I just wanted to make sure no one thought he was being serious. No, no, no. no. They wouldn't kill him and then name a road over where they killed him. Yeah, they didn't like him. That would just no. be mean. No, that's where it's a stark sight where we killed the guy. <laughs> They'd at least put a statue up. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me there's no statue? No, no, it would. <laughs> wow. Um, but ba- but it was it would become a slave. Oh, I, I did hear a little bit in there. I heard that at one point in time, 60 to 90% of all the slave import and export was done through New uh, Newport. It was a part of the uh, triangular trade. Yeah, the triangle trade. Yeah. I think that had to do with some uh, molasses and, um, fuck, what was the other thing? Let me leaky dip. Even though I'm horrible at, at finding things like this. Oh, God, the pressure. <laughs> yeah. It's unreal. Yeah. Oh god. It was um Oh, rum, molasses and slaves. That yeah. Was trying to... Yeah. Yep. So oh, that's what you're looking for. Yes. Go you knew about? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Could say that. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, they were dicks. Is yeah. what we're talking. Yeah. You know, well, really... actually during the war, 
a lot of people who lived in Newport were uh, part, a lot of them were separatists. Like, they were all about the uh, British. No, British. Oh, they were for the British. Yeah. Oh. So they've always been dicks. Yeah. Well, they're, <laughs> they're like the rich people, you know? They're like the ones with all the money and, yeah. you know, the laddie does. The la. Even though I love Newport. Newport's nice. It's so nice. It's, it's very nice. a beautiful place. It really is. And it it would become an even more beautiful place because they went like, we're not going to go with the uh, whole big port city thing. We're going to actually scale it down and uh, get really nice over here. It's just going to be a nice place for rich people to hang Was out. Was this after they continued to do slavery? No, this is right around the time of Industrial Revolution. Oh. So... Obviously, uh, so for those who don't know, the Industrial Revolution started, for the U.S., started right here in Rhode Island. Not right here in particular in Bristol, Pertucket. but in Pawtucket, mm-hmm. Rhode Island. Uh, Samuel Slater, he actually got the, looked at the blueprints of a, uh, of a, um... Well, no, he worked in a mill in Britain. Yeah. For uh, like at- 10 years, since, like... I think at the he started there. He started working in a mill at age seven. Yeah, and then I think he was in his twenties, like twenty three or twenty four, when he came to America. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think he wanted to come to America. Yeah, and then uh, he he was like kind of like like um what's it called like an engineer. Mm-hmm. Like he uh, he was very good at math and you know, equations and all that shit. Well, and then he couldn't bring any blueprints or anything, so he just kind of memorized how to do everything. That's what I mean. He looked at the blueprints and he just memorized it. Yeah, and like then he was wrote so it. Good and then wrote it down. Once he got onto the ship. Yeah. So he memorized it, came here, started Slater's Mill in um, in, in Rhode Island. And then, uh, you know, that led to the industrialization of the entire Northeast region. So New England just, like, exploded. Blew, yeah, it just blew up. There was a whole new growing class of people who worked in these mills. And, you know, they made these, like, little small rich areas all around these uh these, the mills these mills it started uh, pretty much like it it started its own like culture and towns around slater mill like they uh they started making more housing for more employees because the money was just flowing in and they could yeah. afford to hire more employees so like they had to buy more housing with housing comes stores comes churches and like pretty much the whole town pretty much grew out of that it just like, blew up into a whole big like you know, metropolitan almost. Yeah. And and the industrialization led to with obviously with the growing new classes came um, you know, a little bit of class warfare. So there was, you know, only property owners at the time could vote in Rhode Island. Um so the working cl- class had you know, a lot of these guys who worked in the mills didn't have any voting rights. And um they would actually, they actually started to to uh, basically go against, you know, starting to to um, protest this and, and go against uh, uh, this this rule. And then in eighteen forty two, uh, in Doors Rebellion, as it's called, Doors uh, Rebellion in the Ocean State, labor activists rebelled, and they, um, as a result, basically, this is what came of, you know. The uh, laborers, the laborers basically got rights. So they they were essentially they got voting rights um, and non non tax non property owners were allowed to um, poll. So that's good. But they had to pay a tax. They had a tax. They to had a tax vote? to vote. Yeah. Uh, what was the tax? Fucking super mo- like high. I, it was one dollar, which at the time I'm sure was really high. yeah yeah. Um, and then obviously, um, after this point, the, the world was hurtled into a civil war. Um, they, well, not the world. Just well, it was the, the United, so- United States. The United States, which we see as the world, <laughs> <laughs> went to, to world, into the civil war. Uh, we had a notable general, General Burnside. He, Burnside. Yeah. A he, badass name. Yep. Yeah, he actually had some pretty good strategic victories throughout uh, the Civil War. Um, basically, though, you know, we we uh, we were 
against the Articles of Confederation. No, no, we were for the Articles of Confederation. Yeah. I, I completely missed this. Which, and we uh, we were against the uh, Constitution. You not well, no, we were the last ones to sign. We weren't against it. We wanted to argue for more freedoms, more states' freedoms. Yeah, we wanted more yeah. individual and religious rights in yeah. the in the bill. I think it had to do a lot with free speech, also. Yeah, we were really held out until um, a few, like more. We we helped get we're, more freedoms. Yeah, we helped get more religious religious freedoms in, and uh, yeah. freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that was good. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> We've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done it. Our family's like from. Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after the Civil War, it led to, like, with, with the industrialization, industrialization kicking off, like, you know, and obviously being halted a little bit by the Civil War, it went to full boom, and then it led to that Gilded Age where uh, you can still see today in Newport, Rhode Island in particular, like these huge giant summer cottages for the, for they the, are ridiculous they are not cottages they are like 40 bedroom houses uh, just giant mansions they are beautiful and crazy exquisite and all that shit but they look haunted as fuck well I mean they're super old they're old but like they look haunted yeah like you have the the finest most sophisticated ghosts you could buy <laughs> Well, don't forget there was like tons of servants who had lived in there. <laughs> yeah, they li- there's literally walls built so they never see so the that they servants. don't have to see the servants. Yeah. There's walls built between the walls that only the servants would access. And then that's where the fucking ghosts come out of. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> they were literally the like, like, like we we went in yeah. there. We we walked through. They literally had them. They connected into the bathrooms and the closets so yeah. that the they could, like, iron their clothes for them and bring it right to them. And just, like, you know. But, like, the openings weren't ever really in the actual room itself. It was in the like, closets and... In uh, closets and bathrooms. And how creepy would that be to live in a... Like, live that life? Like, you're, like, you're just living. You don't see anyone else. Yeah. But your clothes get delivered and your food are on the table. I had a wedding there when I was, like, 12. And I was Whoa. so sketched out. Lost yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I never been, but you said I remember when you came back from it. You're like, dude, it's fucking awesome over there. Like, yeah, it's, you know, it's beautiful. Great. Like the architecture is all great, and obviously they were all trying to like kind of outdo each other. Yeah, each of these it places. Shows. Yeah, it uh, yeah, shows. It, it shows <laughs> right. Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, they they literally like, you know, like this. Are you? you you seriously like dark vaporing over I there? I can't help it. I gotta like, it's like, all right, fine, put it down. Put it down. All right. All right, it's down. I'm sorry for doing it. Justin's easily faced. Yeah. That's all I hear over here is just. Because <laughs> it's very pronounced. I'm like. I'm like. <laughs> just we'll look over and just like. Like a. <laughs> just, no, I'm very relaxed. I'm having a conversation with you. See, okay? I'm not making a single sound. It was like 120. <laughs> All right, effort. it's down. The, but, but the, I mean, that's like the what Newport is known for, like that that Gilded Age, uh, La di das, big beautiful houses. You know the Vanderbilts. Uh, you know. All the, the, the oil men. The oil men. <laughs> there's summer places there. Yeah, yeah, there's summer homes that are like... Oh, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. It's like, like you know, these places had staffs of people, like 40 people to take care of the... Yeah. The, well, you need 40 people just to fucking dust. Yeah. Because, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's such a massive... Like, and the grounds are, like... Acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's beautiful, like, well manicured, like, everything there. Didn't you say, like, one room had, like, a wall of gold? Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, a gold wall. It was, yeah. go- it's literally gold and platinum <laughs> yeah. to the wall. It's, yeah. like, why? Like, just to, just to it, say we did it. Like, just imagine having, like, being that rich. Yeah. And having people of, like, oh, did you see my gold and platinum wall? You see my gold platinum Isn't it beautiful? Look at this. Do you <laughs> have that? Ah, for that salary. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't made it until you have a golden platinum wall. <laughs> you just have fountains in every room. It's like, <laughs> That's how you know you made it. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. The, the, um, 
the biggest house, which is freaking called the, you know what I'm talking about, the most recent one we went to, they have a literal fountain in the house. They have a mm-hmm. little grotto, not a grotto, it's like a little under the stairs. Well, I think the marble house the and marble. the, um, and the, uh, the main one, yeah. uh, What's the main That's house? That's what I was trying to think of, but I can't think of it. Oh, why am I blanking on, on the name? The They're... But basically, like, these houses are... And, like, each one of them is so extreme. Like, one of them has, like, a whole Japanese-style garden in the back. Like, they... A like koi pub? A uh, koi pub? Breakers. No. Huh? The Breakers. The Breakers. The breakers. Oh, yeah. yes. I, did, I heard about Oof. the Breakers, yes. That's yeah. <laughs> the Breakers... You know, it's it's like beautiful. That's that's the Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, that place is like crazy nice, and then like you step out onto the back, and it's like a freaking looks like a castle from the back. You know what I mean? Like the big marble staircase that goes into this huge yard. Yeah. That over that's on a cliff that oversees the ocean. <laughs> it's it's just ridiculous. Like crazy. Uh, but I mean, that was that was like. That was that area, you know what I mean? And I think I think that's while it was during the um, you know during the before the um, before the independence age, it was like one of the biggest port cities. Hold on, before you we we, we move past the mansions, um, did you see the Belcourt Castle? No. When you were doing that, no. All right, this I was doing. On my little uh, research for the, for doing this, I got onto the top most haunted places in Rhode Island, mm-hmm. and this this castle thing it looks like the haunting of Hill House. Like a, you think of like a big spooky fucking mansion, yeah. and it's like it's so like oh my god, like that's a fucking haunted place. Yeah. Like it's like fucking awesome. It was so cool. I want to go there now. Well, but I, I guess like they have a bunch of like uh, it's like a museum. We should and bring uh, bring our camera equipment. Try to get catch the white noise. You can't go there. Why? Because they want to. It's like privately funded. I'm privately owned. It looks like a church. It looks like a church. Oh, is it? Yeah. It looks like it's not a church. No, no. I'm saying like the inside of picture. Oh, the inside. It looks right, like no, it looks the, terrible. The looks I'm like sure you can go and they probably let you uh purchase uh Maybe, yeah. tickets to go on. Maybe they They'll do. Sell do they, is it open to the public? I don't find out. They, they sell yeah, tickets to everything. They're currently closed right now, obviously, because of the corona. The corona. The corona. Yeah. Ruining of the, everything. Because of the rona, we can't go there. But we prob- they probably even do like a haunted... They do thing. events. Yeah. They do events? Yeah. Yeah. So see, boom, we can do an event. The event is us going around there in the dark with <laughs> flashlights and cameras. Maybe we'll do a GoFundMe to get uh, <laughs> to, yeah. to pay for the event to go through. <laughs> There's a ghost hunter. Go, go fund us to hunt the ghosts there. <laughs> we'll hunt them. We'll hunt them down. We'll find yeah, them. We'll do it. And we'll bring them to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't bring them to you. We will, like... Uh... Oh, well, we have to get those uh those backpacks. Oh, the Ghostbuster backpacks. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> vacuum cleaners. Get some vacuum cleaners. Oh yeah, I'll make them. We'll have a, they'll be functioning ghost sucking machines. <laughs> 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 they go to the ghost. They're gonna love it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> just not so funny. Like, no, nothing. <laughs> what are you going to do that ghost, man? That was... <laughs> <laughs> no, that was for Steven. That's for okay. Steven. That's just for me. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, we're going we're gonna to just fly past a bunch of history. Yep. And uh, go to the postmodern time. Postmodern. Yep. So, uh, after World War II, the once major city of Providence actually hit a slump. Um, so there was a population decrease and, uh, the city was pretty much run down and, uh, had a lot of issues with organized crime. As a lot of people know, um, there's lots of big crime families here of the Italian nature. Who's that guy's name? Patriarca. Patriarca. Patriarca was in Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah. He was like the main guy for all the East coast. Yeah. I think, uh, Nicholson would play him in, uh, Departed. His character was based on Patriarca. Oh no, it was no. Whitey, wasn't it? He was Whitey. He was Whitey. Yeah. But he, out of my ass. But he uh, <laughs> there he was says, connections in there. He yeah. says during the 
let's go down to Providence. Yeah, and he's like, let's not uh, cry over the spill. spill yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah, yep. Dead guineas. Yes. yes. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It was something like that. Don't quote me. <laughs> no, it was for, <laughs> verbatim. Um, and then it was pretty much a city in slump. Like, even us growing up, I mean, growing up here, like, we lived in Providence. The city, downtown area wasn't, like, great. I don't remember. I wasn't really. It was, like, a big parking lot. I only really remember in um, Silver Lake area, Mm -hmm. where we lived in in, uh, Silver Lake. Like, it was, like, kind of, it was shittier than it is now. It's better now over there. Oh, yeah. yeah, Like, it looks a lot better. But when we were kids, it looked shitty. But, like, I wasn't really in the city that much yeah. growing up, so I don't really know. Well, you, ha- you didn't really have any reason to until until they put the mall and all that shit down there. Oh, yeah. Brown Space Mall. Yeah. Um, but since the 70s, they were doing this big... Uh, they were refurbishing the the, uh, the neighborhoods, uh, trying to make it more culturally diverse. And um, that saw, like, large, you know, blossoming areas of, of a culture. And it's, like, kind of like a little... Mini, uh, mini, uh, like, I don't know. It's, like, super, like, diverse it and is cultural. Very and Rhode Island. Island. It has, like, this, like, this weird feel when you're in it. It's, like, uh, well, growing up, it was always diverse. And we had, like, a lot of different, like, nationalities and everything in, like, all of our schools well, and stuff like that. I, like, I think the thing that separates Robins is I think they have, like, a a large art community. Oh yeah, in, in Providence, and I think that like you know that that in itself just you know breathes. Well, not only that, you have a lot of like food related things. Like you have like a lot like Italian restaurants here are fucking amazing. You have all the seafood yeah. by individual, you know, play you know different styles, and then you have like. Indian food, Chinese food, you have Mexican food, you know, you, it's just a really foodie kind of yeah. place to go. And I think that really brings, you know, people together because everyone likes good food. So. Yeah. And, and it says, it, when I was doing the research, it was like since the, uh, before the early 2000s, but more so after the early 2000s, there was a large, you know, strong art community, notable LGBT community. Um, and it brought back like with all this this art and culture brought back a lot of tourists that kind of they didn't they didn't go and stop and you know people weren't stopping in Providence they were going to the beach right that's why they came to Rhode Island yeah I mean they a Trinity rep and like you know a lot of big artsy galleries and museums and shit like that I mean when we lived on when we lived in Providence that that little theater at the top like every Thursday there would be Hundreds of oh, people yeah, wow. outside of that th- that small little theater, and it wasn't you were the one like, on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that little theater, and that's just a small one. You know, I'm not, I'm not even like Trinity Reps or any of the bigger ones. It was like a yeah, hipstery exactly. kind of trendy kind of yeah. thing to go to. I never went. I always kind of wanted to. Though. They did more than movies and stuff. They did like shows and like singing. Yeah, yeah. I I know uh, the guys upstairs, the um, our old neighbors. They're like, hey man, we're going down that theater in the in the um. At the corner of the street over there, they're showing Mandy. And I'm like, what the hell is Mandy? He goes, oh, it's the new Nick Cage flick. And I'm like, really? I'm a fan. You know, <laughs> tell me more. And he's like, dude, it's awesome. It's like, they kill his wife. He makes a big fucking axe. And they go and they're cultists and they're demons. And Nick Cage just goes in here and kicks ass. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm fucking sold, dude. I was totally blasted and so was he. So I was like, oh, yeah, we're leaving at eight. And I was like. Awesome, man. And I was like, you want to go? I was like, man, maybe. <laughs> and then I got blasted. Totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that movie sounds good. Probably. No, it was awful, by the way. It was a bad <laughs> showing for Nick yeah. Cage. Well, it probably would have been better if, like, somebody else played that role. No. No one could have played <laughs> that particular role. All right. The only mo- thing... The only Maybe thing John thought, Travolta. No fucking way. <laughs> the the only movie that the only reason that movie was watchable was because Nick Cage was in it. Hundred <laughs> percent. That movie nah. was go. You didn't said no one ever. Said no one ever. You didn't see the movie. All right. You can't judge. If he wasn't in it, the movie would suck. Okay. It did. You said it sucked. It did suck, but it was. <laughs> it's better for being Nick Cage was in it. Everyone around him sucked. The story sucked. It looked cool. 
<laughs> I mean, you it know is. what else sucked? Steven, Nick Cage, that night. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Burp. Burn. Burn. Burp like acid. It was just... <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so, so going back to the uh, city of Newport, it was, it was known for being, you know, the country's rich and famous uh, vacation destination. But it yeah, was they- also because of that a place of many firsts. So, in in uh, in the city, uh, they had the first gas lit street lamps. Really, mm-hmm. they. They opened the first uh, tennis open there. Um, the first open in golf. Oh my god! The, the, fr- the, <laughs> the most preppiest, witty, yeah. like Richie's whitest fucking things you can think of. The first yep. ever speeding ticket was issued for an automobile. Oh there. my god! <laughs> because Rhode Island has also the worst drivers. Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, that's... Not we'll, we'll, that's we'll, we'll have to have a whole episode Wait, about no, no, that. We're gonna, we'll, we'll digress into that <laughs> yeah. a little bit. I have a lot uh, to say about this. Yeah. The, uh, they had the oldest library. Library. The, library. 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 <laughs> like a place where you lie with berries. Library. <laughs> library. Library. Go, I like library better. It just sounds... It does sound... Like, it just rolls off library. better. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> get my book learning done. <laughs> and then obviously the uh, summer cottages, those small summer cottages that are there, uh, which well, gives everybody a glimpse of how uh, the rich and, and famous lived. Um, uh, almost saying it. Here, here's a here's one thing that I thought was cool, but I hate. What? Well, so the state. Income tax was in the, in Rhode Island first enacted in 1971 as a temporary measure. <laughs> Prior to 1971, there was no income tax in the state. What? Yes. So, um, and this was set up just to be a, a temporary tax for for um, Providence, just to get over a, a a hard time. The tax burden has remained since that time, and is the fifth. Highest in the United States, including sales tax, gasoline, property. That's so Rhode Island. Um, cigarettes, corporate, and capital gain, gains tax are amongst the highest in the state yeah. in, the, in the country. Yeah, and where does all that tax money go? Not to the roads. To the mob. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> maybe before. to the patriarch family. So not maybe <laughs> in the past, but like don't hurt us. <laughs> yeah. They don't exist anymore. They're all ninety. I cannot run them. <laughs> yeah, and they can't aim anymore. So they got did the shakes. Did I ever tell you like there was a there was like an enforcer that came to. Um, where my mom used to work on, on the hill. I almost got recruited. No, he, he like, <laughs> he walked in there. Like, he was an old dude. Yeah. And it was just like, I'm a part of the, I'm, a, I'm an enforcer for the mob. Like, you guys pay me for protection. This was, like, a couple of years ago. Where? Where, where she used to work? Hill, you know, oh, yeah. The, the salon. No shit. So, so they would, they were asked for protection money. And he, and they were like, no. You know what I mean? And this, I think, I, I believe this guy you about gets, me like, bullshit. I, I believe this guy got caught trying to break into the place later on. Not, it's real desperate for the yeah. mob to be breaking into a salon. For Just the to like, cut, hey, you know, see, you need that protection. Somebody would try to break in. <laughs> like you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, that's essentially what they did. Right? Yeah, I know. They were cool. like, hey, you need protection from us. <laughs> you pay me not to fuck with you. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much what they did. That is what they did. But you know what I love? And this is a very Rhode Island, especially Providence thing. It's like when they re- regale at the the head of the crime wave, like when the mob rammed shit. And yeah. like, those were the days. Oh. You know, like, <laughs> that when, Petri- is- when Metriac was there, this shit was clean. Everything was great. There was no crime, except for what they did, you know, because they stole a lot of shit. But... It was safe. I felt safe walking down the streets. I think, you no, know I really think, it, it, I don't think it is a, just a Rhode Island thing. I think a lot of people, like, love these Like, like romanticize it. Romanticize these criminals. And they're like, like, in the end, like, they're criminals. Yeah. Like, they're like, 
you believe like Bonnie and Clyde, like blah blah. blah. You know, it's like they think that these people are like um, Bonnie and Clyde had a very like a sexy story. Oh, these star-crossed lovers going around fucking always eluding police and you know <laughs> getting away people. with it, and killing people. But <laughs> you know. They were idiots, really. If yeah. you really look into it, yeah, they were just fucking lucky. They got lucky. They got lot. lucky a lot. Like, he could drive really good. Clyde could drive really good. But, like, they were fucking idiots. They were awful criminals. They got caught all the time. But, I mean, that's the same thing here. You know, in Rhode Island, it's like everyone romanticizes. The, well, look uh, at Buddy. Yeah, Buddy Sands. Everyone's like, Buddy was the man. I like Buddy. All right, I'm not gonna like this. I like I watch this show. I'll listen to his radio. I mean, show. he did he did make Providence what it is today. He did. He also <laughs> embezzled and racketeered a lot of yep. money, tax payment. But he paid for his crimes. Yep. I would have voted for him last time he ran. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I kind of like him. He lo- he lost to Jose Alorza. He did. And then. uh you know, Jorge Alonso is just, like, never in the state. <laughs> he's, like, always... He's never around. He's never around. <laughs> I don't even know where he is. I haven't seen him. Looks around. Where he is. Alonso! Where are you? <laughs> I, think now, I think now it's time to get into the interesting facts. Interesting facts. Fun facts. Fun facts. Here's All a great right. one for you. I got one right off go the bat. Go, go, go. All right. They were looking for Roger Williams' grave to build a monument for him. Yep. Right? It was in... I, I believe it's somewhere in uh, the park. They mm-hmm. built the statue of him, supposedly where they uh, found his grave. Yeah. But they uh, his house got so decrepit, it fell into the basement. And they had, um, through time, they lost the grave site. But they were digging around, I guess. And they located teeth, nails, and some bone fragments. And while they were looking there, in uh, the supposed grave site, they found a apple seed, uh, like an apple root for the tree. In the shape of a nervous system, legs, and it was like a fucking creepy little. They made a diagram of it, so they think that the the root went into the body. Oh, and, and then like grew formed into it, formed it. into it. Yeah. And I guess when they dug up the grave and found it, they were like, "This is cool." So they kept it out of the grave, and then now they have it preserved in the historical society and uh, It would be funny if that wasn't even him. Like it's just it's like tr- no way it's him. him. It's not. Him. <laughs> <laughs> it's clear. No way. I am one hundred percent sure. It's like him. it's like his. Uh, There's no DNA testing. It sounds like a fucking lie. Hey, we didn't find the body, but it's like great grandchild Bobby. We found this apple. <laughs> no, it's like the the, the Roger Williams <laughs> apple it's, tree root. It's, it's like a root Williams. It's his great grandchild, Bobby Williams. Bobby Williams. <laughs> <laughs> now he's haunting the the park, you know, just being like, "It's me, it's me, it's not, it's, it's not, not Grandpa." Grandpa. I hated that guy. <laughs> Always talking about his religious freedoms and shit and around the, the table. I just want to eat the fuck the turkey guy. I don't want to talk about your politics. <laughs> um, so Benedict Arnold was the first appointed governor of. Rhode Island. Not the Benedict Arnold that you're thinking. This is actually his great grandfather. Benedict Arnold the third. Benedict <laughs> Benedict Arnold's grandfather was the first governor of Rhode Island. Wow. It would have been so Later interesting on, if it was the Benedict Arnold I'm thinking of. Well he would have been dead. Yeah. It was 1663. I don't know dates, Justin, just names. But basically, then that that traitor. <laughs> <laughs> that goddamn Benedict Arnold, Benedict Arnold. Uh, would come from that. Oh, he was the traitor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, fuck that guy. <laughs> and his grandkid. May 4th, 1776, Rhode Island became the first colony to renounce their allegiance to King George III. Fuck that guy. They were like, ha, ah, fuck you. Like... They're very quick like to small, say fuck you. Small, small state. They're like, yeah, fuck that guy. In small state, biggest balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the General Assembly used to celebrate May 4th as Rhode Island's Independence Day. Because it was, we, we, we declared May it before. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> That's cool. Nerdy, but cool. Um, here's the one. Although enslaved workers were an important part of the colony's economy, Rhode Island passed the first gradual emancipation after the Quakers waged a campaign to abolish slavery. Children who were born to enslaved people after March 1st, 1784 would become the first free 
for a period known as an apprenticeship, which is fucked up, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it exists, they would, you know, after that period, they would no longer be uh, slaves. The Quakers, man, they they knew they, they were would like aggressive. Hey, yeah, they'd like, hey, you could you do this. They're like, we want freedom for all and eat our fucking oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on September 12, 1953, John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier were married in St. Mary's Church of Newport. And that's why they were assassinated. It's Rhode, I- <laughs> it's Rhode Island's oldest Roman Catholic parish. Just Roman Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. Right 1828 was made. Um... Rhode Island is the only state that still celebrates the end of World War II on Victory Day. And I love that because it's time and a half where I work. Great. We are the only ones. We're still like, yeah, fuck yeah, Victory Day. <laughs> I love it. More all of this. Yeah. Um, time and a half. Great. Don't, don't stop that. Preferring the Articles of Confederation, Rhode Island refused to participate in creating in the creation of the U.S. Constitution. And they were the last of the original 13 states to ratify it. That's right. Because we wanted to have more rights for everyone else. We're just rebels. Rebels. <laughs> uh, so so here's, a, uh, here's a list of some notable Rhode Islanders. You want, you want to? No, you got it. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hit my mic with my headphones. Cormac McCarthy, the novelist. Hmm, never heard of him. Actor James Woods. James Woods. Television personality Meredith Vieira. And Civil War U.S. Army officer Ambrose Burnside. Well, they look are. up that guy. He's a badass. Well, the Farley brothers and Seth MacFarlane. Well, yeah, that's those are new. Those are newer ones. Those but are like classics. Like the best ones. Family Guy, dude. Classic already. Yeah. It will go down. And obviously, week. when we go down to Quahog, we'll celebrate. Yeah. Quahog, Rhode Island. That's go a place. On. Look it up. Yep. It's real. <laughs> it's really Cranston. It's based on Cranston. Really? That's what I heard. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can see Providence. Yeah, it's the same style. Yeah. It's the style. You see the Superman building. Well, I don't know. He said it in an interview that it was based on Cranston. He said it was the best town ever. And it was a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful... <laughs> He did say it. That's hilarious. Uh, well, some parts are really nice. I know. Rhode Island prides itself on an open, independent attitude. And Brown University was founded in 1764 and was the first American college to accept students of all different religions. Angie's they were the first ones to accept the Jews into religion. Yeah. Well, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rhode Island may be the smallest state in the country, but it has a lot of coastline. And like I said before, 400 miles of coast makes for an abundance of beach locations. So if you're ever here in the ocean state, make sure you enjoy some of our beautiful beaches. But not during Corona, after just COVID. stay home. After COVID. Yeah. After no, it's COVID. it's sunny. Stop trying to fuck us up. <laughs> stay where you are. We don't want you here. Yeah, you, no. A Rhode Islanders, go enjoy Yeah, Rhode Islanders beaches. can go. Masters yeah. is in Connecticut. You all stay out because you want to keep us out. Once yeah. you came here and gave us the corona. Yeah. All right, y'all came here. And then we got, we spiked up and then you're like, shut your gates. It's fucked up, man. It's fucked up. <laughs> but Connecticut, I know you did it too. <laughs> yeah, you were all here. You were on the beaches. Yeah, you, you were there. Well, obviously, what else was there to do in Connecticut? Nothing. It's a, yeah. drive, it's a drive-thru state. Yeah. It, it is a drive <laughs> That's why. So that is the history and we might cover some more in the future. Yeah. Some stuff in a little more detail. Maybe yeah. go back and cover the King Philip War. Well, one thing I was doing that could be interesting is like... Roger Williams himself, you could do like a whole... Yeah, he's a super he's interesting a cool guy. guy. Yeah, he's actually really interesting. Yeah. Another thing is like every square foot of this state is like haunted. <laughs> so like we could do like a we haunted could do a ghost ghost thing. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters thing. Or like at least uh, haunted <laughs> sites around. Because I, I just learned this today. The house based in the con- the Conjuring was yeah. in uh, Burlingame. Burlingame. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The house looks scary in real life than it does in the it, movie. It does look scary. That fucking that's house is house. like, yeah. dude. Have you ever seen uh, what's the uh, what's that 
that uh, psychiatric hospital that they use to test on people. The psych... Oh, a, uh, uh, fuck. It wasn't... I don't know why I can't remember. Oh! Is it in it Warwick? Was, right? Yeah, it was in Warwick. It was um, it's like, La- LaSalle. Like, no, not LaSalle. That's the school. Oh, I can't Fuck, remember. what was the name of that? Dude, there was like 12 buildings. Yeah, it was like, it was like easy a, big. My buddies went there. I missed that day. <sighs> oh, yeah. It's like a... It's Fuck. A, that's I, like a I local legend. Too. Yeah. It's like one of those things... I can't remember the name. Is it Bradley Hospital? Yes. No, it's not Bradley. It's not Bradley? Not no, Bradley is an actual there. hospital. It's I a, think it's it began more like... Um, an old... Um, Butler? It, I no, no, Butler. It's not it's Butler. Butler right? No, this is a. It used to exist Mercy? a long time ago. They were they got in trouble for possible experiments on on patients. Yeah, and it's like it was mm. it was just like an abandoned place for Central a long time. Central Hospital. No, no. It's Howard in State. Huh? No, it's in State. Warwick. It's I believe it's in Warwick or like East Greenwich. It's in that Kent area. Someone oh, did. Uh, if you, hospital, no, haunted insane asylum? Was it an asylum? It was, I believe it was an insane asylum. Um, uh, but it was, it was, it was pretty, it's like. Did you go there? I know a lot of people, I've, I've been there, but I know a lot of people who've had some really crazy, weird things happen to them in those buildings. Well, Obviously you're not allowed, you're not allowed to go there because the buildings are condemned. They're all like, a lot of people I've. You don't know who've been there, like stairs collapsing when they're there, like fucking it's dangerous. Definitely don't go there. Not saying you should, but it's like a scary uh, thing that definitely has teenagers. Hold on. Another big one is Lad School. That is it. That's Is it Lad School? Yeah. Yeah, that was it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lad School. Because it was a school and then uh And then it became a asylum. Right? Yeah. It was. I think it was either an asylum that became a school or a school that became an asylum. Yeah, it was one or the other. Yeah, yeah. It was an Exeter. Yeah, Exeter. That one. This. Yeah, that was like really like I heard a bunch of shit going down there. Yeah, like a lot of kids would sneak in there. My uh, buddies, my cousin, went in there and had some crazy shit happen. Yes, yeah. this. You know what's also really creepy is our. Uh, it's been demolished. Rocky. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was the most. Because kids would just go in there. And Rocky Point? Rocky Point was oh, scary, dude. too. That's not even, like, the local thing, right? Yeah. Listen, as a kid, when it was still closed up, because Rocky Point is open now. So you can go down there and check out where all the old shit was. But about a mile down the road from Rocky Point, because there was a gate there, so we snuck, we wanted to sneak in. So we, like, we thought we would slide and sneak into the woods. Yeah. If you just sneak into the woods, like, a mile down the road, like, from the gate, take a left about a mile down there, there's, like, an abandoned beach town. Like, not town, but, like, two blocks of abandoned beach houses. Yeah. It's, like, a post-apocalyptic, like, nature has, re- like, reclaimed these houses. Yeah. There's, like, branches and shit. We used to play paintball over there. That's pretty cool. It was fucking awesome. But we were always afraid to go inside the houses because we thought homeless people live there. And I was like, they're in there. That's what, like if I was homeless, I'd fucking live there. Cause I mean, it's a nice beachfront property. It is. Really, it's <laughs> and decrepit. you have an amusement park right next. You know what? It's not decrepit. <laughs> it has character. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I this, totally this is a uh, this is the Rhode Island history. Yeah. Um, if you liked it, please uh, like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Yep, and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Did we miss any history that you want to hear about? Um, and yeah, let us know what you think. And if you have any thoughts on episodes in on our uh, social media pages. All right, everybody. All right, everyone.